I have been asked many times over the past year or so, do I need a collective to fly helicopters in DCS? Well, let's talk about it. All right, first we got to understand what a collective is and in a helicopter the collective collectively changes the pitch angle of the main rotor blades to create lift now some of you know the rotor blades are essentially small wings that spin through the air and create pressure differentials much like stiff wings do on airplanes but unlike a normal airplane who changes the pitch of the aircraft to change that lift component a helicopter simply changes the angle of attack by moving the blades via the collective so the question is do i need a collective to play dcs Full disclosure, I didn't own a collective till about mm, seven or eight months ago when a developer sent me a prototype collective that he was working on as he intended to enter the flight simulation hardware market. While that plan has been put on the back burner for a variety of reasons, I'm still using the device and enjoying the immersion factor. But for the longest time, years really, I was using a standard Thrustmaster T16000 plastic throttle and most recently upgraded to the Verpal Mongoose CM3. Now many people will invert the throttle to mimic a collective in a sense that they pull the throttle back to imitate pulling on the collective. I strongly suggest that you do not do this. Muscle memory is repetitive learned behavior that your body will fall back onto during a state of crisis or high stress. Meaning if you use the throttle to fly jets and you're used to pushing for more power, then you fly helicopters where you pull for more power, you may find yourself pushing when you meant to pull and vice versa when things get a little dicey in game. Otherwise, however, use of a throttle is completely reasonable. All that fundamentally matters is that you have the throw or range of motion to adequately give yourself the granularity and control input, which a standard throttle should easily provide. Here you see me flying the Huey with my mongoose, albeit with some curves applied to keep my control inputs within what I find are comfortable tolerances. Now you can see that I have little to no issue maintaining my desired power settings and adjusting for the controllability. And here I'm using the collective, again, minor curve set for my own taste, but otherwise the control aspect is similar to what you would find when I use a throttle. One thing that I actually don't like about hardware collective is positioning. If you have a chair with an armrest like I do, it means you have to extend your arm uncomfortably around it to manipulate the controls. Additionally, and let's be honest here, they're expensive. While many are gorgeously designed to provide a myriad of buttons, switches, and knobs, it's still hundreds of dollars into a piece of equipment that you can use for only maybe a quarter of what you fly in DCS, depending on what your taste in aircraft are. Of course, there is the immersion factor and the rule of cool, Yes, it feels more immersive to pull an armpit load of collective while climbing out of a hot LZ. And if your pocketbook allows it, then sure, go for it. But if you're buying a collective simply because you think it will make it easier to learn flying helicopters or make you a better sim pilot, I guess all I can say to that is I disagree. If I had to recommend one piece of hardware that is essential for flying rotary wing, then it would be a good set of pedals, as maintaining trim and heading at a hover with a twist grip can lead to actual medical issues over time, and it's just hard to control with any precision without tons of practice. So what about you guys? Do you have a collective or do you wish you had one? Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are about collectives and thanks for watching. We'll talk to you guys later. Take care.